The Rural ProCare Health Equity Research Network is one of four health equity research networks funded by the American Heart Association that are focused on improving cardiovascular health equity and reducing disparities in cardiovascular disease for various conditions like high blood pressure, for special populations like mothers and babies, or in our case, for people in rural areas. Rural ProCare Network consists of a coordinating center at the University of Washington, as well as five projects all around the country, each addressing rural health. This is a $20 million award funded by the American Heart Association, started in 2023 and will go for four years until 2027. Reciprocal innovation is the idea that there are shared barriers to health all across the world, things like transportation problems, not enough workforce, mistrust in the health system. And so, if someone in some place around the world has figured out a creative solution for overcoming those barriers, it may be possible to translate that from one context to another. So I'm a cardiologist in, in Brazil, and my role in the Grow Rural project as a consultant is to bring to the group the experience in adapting a digital health intervention that was created for U.S. urban population to the Brazilian context. Now I'm bringing the lessons learned to this group to adapt this intervention back to rural U.S. There is some uh, specificities and shared challenges between these populations, like, for example, long travel distances, restricted access to cardiologists, and also a lower digital literacy. And we all need to take this into account when we are designing the intervention so we really reach this population. So I'm a family physician here at Terry Riley, and we work with underserved communities, including many rural patients. And when we're working with them in terms of their heart failure, they encounter a lot of barriers, transportation, finances, language barriers, access to subspecialty care, and even coming in to see me in the office can be a challenge for them. So it's something we're trying to work through. I think our rural population are uniquely independent and strong. They're used to working through challenges. And so when they have the challenge of heart failure or other health conditions um, and they choose to fight it, they do a great job and they're willing to put in the hard work that's needed to try and improve their health. I grew up in a rural community in Northern California and um, also lived on the Cherokee Nation Reservation in Northeast Oklahoma. I'm a citizen of the United States and of the Cherokee Nation. And I've always been interested in how I could contribute to my communities. I decided to become a Grow Rural Project Fellow because this project appealed to me for many reasons. I love the idea of global exchange of ideas. There's so much we can learn from different people and this project really is facilitating learning from people, governments and communities in other countries and bringing those good ideas here to the rural Western United States. Community partnerships are important because communities know what they need. Communities are the experts in their own needs in healthcare and so medical professionals would do well to partner with communities and really listen and respect them and let them lead. Especially in Native communities, there has been a long history of mistrust and harms and multi-generational trauma. So any medical professional that wants to work in a Native community needs to understand that history and approach with respect and a willingness to listen. The University of Washington serves as the coordinating center for all five projects. Our Grow Rural project is centered at the University of Washington with our partners at the University of Idaho and Montana State. The Cincinnati Children's Group is using their work in Uganda to inform an intervention to improve Native American health. They are screening for heart disease using community health workers and AI-guided ultrasound. The Oregon Health and Sciences University project is screening for methamphetamine-associated heart disease among people who use methamphetamine in rural Oregon. The Duke Project is trying to figure out how to use drones to deliver defibrillators to out-of-hospital cardiac arrest victims in rural North Carolina and rural Virginia. The Stanford and Palo Alto VA Project is using clinical pharmacists to manage heart failure and improve the care of rural veterans living with heart failure across the United States. So my role on Rural ProCare is working with projects to think about their interventions and innovations, how do we bring those to scale across the state where they're working and hopefully across the country to have the greatest benefit to the most people. Legal epidemiology is the study of law as a factor in public health. And so when we look at identifying a public health problem and then we look at the law and the role that that might be having on that population health issue, where those come together, that's where legal epidemiology comes in. 
The Rural ProCare Network will ultimately have impact by taking all of the evidence that's generated by these projects and bringing it to scale by connecting with state offices of rural health, the national organization of state offices of rural health, and working with legislatures to bring these evidence-based strategies to scale. And I can guarantee you that there is absolutely something hiding out there in rural America that will one day be used to improve heart disease in Uganda and Brazil. So we in the Rural ProCare Network are really passionate about this concept of reciprocal innovation, and we are convinced it's gonna improve cardiovascular health for people all around the world.